Happy Wednesday, everyone. It is the first week of 2017. Um, hope you guys are back in the swing. We are. We got some great things going on. We had a fantastic year last year, and this year is starting off really good. Uh, I want to get to a couple things today that come up every once in a while, and I may have answered them in the past, but being as we always have a lot of new people coming in, I want to answer them again, and I think it'll be valuable for you, even those of you that may have seen it before. So first things first, I got a question from Dan Smith. I think it was yesterday or maybe even early this morning it says I got my new Makita router and out of, uh, and took it out of the box uh, this afternoon I want to cut a hole in the back but I have a qu couple questions first it has a rubber grip on it and there's a raised mounting screw hole for attachments can I drill my hole through both of these um, see picture attached and give me some feedback so this is the picture one of the pictures that he sent me this is uh, basically the way the router base housing, uh, I guess a router housing, base housing looks. And it's got a rubber pad on it. So what I did was I took, a, a, because I have a Makita that I use for several different things. I don't use it, I use it for carbon signs, but not that much because I have several of my DeWalt's. But I use it for trimming off stuff. So this is, uh, a, but I have used it for carving signs. So this is my Makita base. Now, this obviously doesn't have my base plate on it. But I pulled that rubber off. That's what I did. And then I drilled a two inch hole. The modification basically is the same as the DeWalt's and that's what I wrote him back. But this, uh, the, the, what is different on the De, than the DeWalt's, if you look right here, I'm, I know I'm messing you up babe, I'm sorry. Uh, right here, there's a little mounting screw, like a set screw for, um, for attachments and stuff. I just cut that thing completely out. So I drilled my, I took the rubber pad off, I drilled my two inch hole, and I dropped it down about an inch from the top. This is about an inch. Drilled my two inch hole, and then I hacksawed that off, and then I put my uh, R base plate on it. But that's, that's how I did it. Now, there may be some of you that, do it, that did it different or you think that weakens the router base housing. Um, I don't think it does. I, I guess if you were going to drop it off of a building, maybe it might weaken it a little bit. But um, anyway, that's the way I modified that in case you guys have any questions on modifying. And this is the, the little Makita RT0701C, the little palm router that Makita makes. Okay, so hope that helps. Next question. This one is going to be a little bit longer. Um, Leroy Severson, my buddy up north in the Pacific Northwest, says, um, what do you think about doing a coffee and questions on what you charge for people that bring you a piece of wood and want you to carve it? I've got a piece. 13 by 30 by inch and a half inch cedar that a guy wants me to make a sign out of. So, um, I've got several, I, I actually I have a lot of thoughts on this because this has happened to me so many times over the years. <clears throat> first things first, if you're going to carve the customer's piece of wood, always, 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 again, my opinion, you know, if you want to do it different, that's up to you. But for me, I would always have to get that piece of wood in my hand. Now, by a, if the guy is local, then that's easy to do. If he happens to be long distance, then what I the first process is I said, send me as many pictures of it as you can. Let me get a look at it. And I can tell you whether it makes sense for you to ship it to me then when I have it in my hand, then I will tell you whether I can or can't 100%. So that's, that's, always, that's been my policy, and that's a policy that I have had for the last 20 years because before that, I was really um, regretted not having that policy. But you guys do what you want to do. But let me tell you why. So here I have some pieces of wood, and... For instance, this is a piece of that black walnut uh, that that customer sent me that I actually made a sign out of for my buddy. It was a um, uh, UPS sign, my buddy John. Um, this is a great looking piece of wood. It actually carved good, um, but look at this. 
you can see that that can be a problem that live edge kind of came loose on it um, so even pictures can be deceiving if you get a picture of this and you think oh I'm not gonna have any problems with that at all you can't tell till you get it in your hand especially even for the wetness of the board so this one um, that live edge is coming loose on it so that's something that you got to deal with you're gonna have to glue that back on now um, how I would price the um, how I would price the difference between um, somebody sending me a board or me furnishing the board exactly the same for me and, and your customer is going to say or might say well you know you don't have to pay for the board why are you charging me the same price well you know that live edge coming loose gives you an example of you never know what's going to come up when you've got somebody else furnishing you the board um, and the headaches and the problems that it becomes just by literally you not being able to pick the board let me give you another example here's a piece of redwood a one inch redwood beautiful board light hardly no moisture in it at all but even with this you've got a little bit of a, an edge a bad edge that you'll have to deal with on this one can you see that okay babe um, so, you know, this is very minor and it's no big deal, but the cost of material is almost nothing compared to the, the labor and, and headache that you're going to have in dealing with somebody else's board. Um, let me give you another example. This board from a picture may look just fine, but look at this thing. And this thing weighs like 20 pounds. It's like half water. This is a piece of probably dug fur construction material. So in essence, it may look like it's going to carve all right, but till you have it in your hand, you just you can't know for sure. Um, so uh, again, however you're going to price your sign, if you furnish the material. Um, that's the same price that I would give them if they furnish the material because it really isn't about the cost of the material it's more about what you're gonna have to go through to make a nice sign out of this so uh, in this particular instance a 13 by 30 um, I was just gonna figure out what I would charge and, and this will be another um, example for you so 13 by 30 on Leroy's board here uh, is I multiplied those two and I came up with 390 so that would be 390 square inches divided by 144 which is a square foot is 2.7 square feet let me go let me do that one more time 13 times 30 that's the size of the board equals 390 divided by 144 which is a square foot means that board is 2.70 square feet if I was pricing that sign out my base price would be a, somewhere around 70 bucks a square foot and that's gone up over the over the last few years so whatever your price per square foot or, or square inch um, 70 times what did I say it was 2.7 2.7 is $189 so that would be $189 whether I furnish the material or they furnish the material the base price starts at about 190 bucks then it depends from that point it depends on whether there's artwork whether they've got a bunch of carving on it so the price might go up from there but it might it might stay the same if it's all simple lettering that's the way I go about it, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. I know I'm going long here, but this is something that I really wanted to, I really wanted to go over. All right, sign carvers of the day. Um, got some really good ones. This one, first one is from Mark Stallings. This one um, is kind of almost hard to see, but it's got a really, it's got our little American flag layout template on it. And I just thought it looked really cool. It's got a beautiful color to the board. I don't know if he put a stain on it or not. He really didn't give me any any specific. Um, looks like it's cedar, but it might be pine with a cedar stain on it. So that's uh, that's sign carver of the day number one, and uh, number two, Cody Schroeder. Cody does some amazing signs. This is actually an older one. 
And I bet you, I bet if you talk to Cody, you ask him about the issues that he had dealing with that slab. Um, I bet he had a bunch. <laughs> so just because, and I, I don't know, that may be a, that may be a piece of wood that he, um, that he furnished. I don't know if the customer furnished it or not, uh, but uh, terrific sign. But Cody does some, if you're on the Facebook groups very much, um, Cody does some amazing stuff, as many of you guys that are just knocking it out of the park, you guys posting stuff on uh, the Facebook groups. By the way, if you want me to, if you want to be part of the sign carver of the day and you want me to show it, don't necessarily think that I'll pick it up by the Facebook groups just because I'm part of those groups. You need to email those pictures to me and then I'll put you, you know, put them in uh, submission for the sign carvers of the day. Oh, man. I think I did that all one breath. <laughs> Not a breath. All right, you guys. We got so much going on. Uh, it's great plans for 2017. Very excited about the stuff we got coming up. So um, Friday, uh, in two days, I'll be doing a demo, and I got something really special planned. So tune in for that. Don't forget to follow me on uh, Instagram. It's in the, the uh, description. Make a wood sign. I'm starting to post more and more stuff on there. Um, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, we would love for you to. If you found value out of this, um, please share our videos as much as you can. Pass the word. Um, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate all of the support and a thumbs up if this was helpful to you. Um, and thanks again. I hope you guys are making some sawdust and having a great new year. Uh, we will see you guys on Friday. Bye-bye.